Hey everyone, thanks for hitting that play button. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Cora. I'm the owner of Reverence and Reverie Photography in the Finger Lakes region of upstate New York. In the following video that you're about to watch, I go through my top five leading poses that I use when I'm shooting couples. I had two goals in mind when filming this video. The first being that hopefully future clients will feel more comfortable coming to me because they can get a bit of behind the scenes and they'll know how I work and also know how I guarantee that I'm getting those shots you want. The second goal would be that growing photographers watch this video and learn a little bit from me. I consider myself a growing photographer sometimes as well, but having a plan really makes me feel so much more confident heading into sessions. With these five poses laid out, not only does it let me feel comfortable with my clients and guarantee that I'm getting the shots that I need, it also makes my clients feel more comfortable because there's a flow. With our first pose, they're it's a little informal. They don't have to be quite as intimate and we're just getting comfortable. By that last pose, hopefully we're the best of friends and they feel comfortable really showing the love that they have for each other. Let's get started. first pose we're doing is called the M pose and you'll see why shortly but really I'm just gonna have them hold hands it's a great pose to start with because they can move and they don't have to be too intimate yet um, I'm just kind of giving them a chance to warm up and get used to me as a photographer okay so friend, I'm going to Change locations, but ideally, if you're in the same spot, this is a really easy pose to move into from that M because I'm just going to have them go closer together and stand next to each other. And in this one, it's important to remember that changing where their hands are can really change the composition of the picture. Okay, guys. straight into our third leading pose and that's going to be them facing each other and this is when we're going to get a lot of those romantic moments um so hopefully they're comfortable with you by now so you're gonna fourth leading pose I'm going to take you through is kind of your classic prom pose but a little less corny. The first thing you want to remember is that your client's hands should never be symmetrical. This is symmetrical. That makes them look a little bit wider than they actually are and it just staged and awkward. Always make sure your client's hands are asymmetrical. They should never be doing the same thing on both sides. Another thing to remember is that this pose is a great opportunity to make use of cute laughter or a little kiss on the cheek, something like that that shows that happy teenage love that we do see in prom pictures. Okay, we've reached our fifth and final pose. It's time for our clients to take a seat, take a break, and let us do all the work from here on out. For this, we're going to move through those past four poses. So we're kind of cheating. It's not necessarily a new pose. They're gonna start holding hands. We're gonna move them closer together, throw some arms over each other, have them face each other. And then for that prom pose, that's really an opportunity for you to play around with them. Maybe their backs are facing each other or they're really leaning heavily on one another. 
this is also a great opportunity for you to take advantage of them sitting down and them taking that break finally being comfortable with you, make sure you're getting all those little details. For example, if it's an engagement shoot, you want to make sure you're getting that ring on her finger. It's also a great opportunity to get closer to them, get closer to their faces, and get those really raw, intimate moments. Something that's going to help you do that is varying the angles that you're shooting from. Take some straight on, maybe you want to sit on the ground, take some leaning up with a lot of sky in the background, or even shoot from above. A lot of times, because I'm shorter, a little stool that I bring along will help me do that while still keeping a safe distance from them so they don't feel too uncomfortable. Thanks for watching everyone. I hope you enjoyed it. If you'd like to learn a little bit more or if I talked a little too fast for you, there should be a PDF file under this video that includes the five different poses I used as well as some variations that you can get using those poses. Like I said, I'm not an expert but I do know these work for me and I hope they'll work for some of you as well. This was my first time doing something like this so I'd love to hear what you thought and maybe I'll do some more. I'll see you guys soon.